The tech industry offers you a chance to solve interesting problems, work with new technologies, and disrupt entire industries. But it all starts with you getting your first job. In my role as Director of Program Management at Reskill Americans, I work with a lot of people who are trying to transition into the tech industry. A lot of people want to work in tech, but getting your foot through the door isn't easy. Together, we'll examine how to develop a job search strategy that puts you on top of the resume pile and helps you stand out from the crowd. My hope is that by the end of this video, you'll be better prepared to land your first job. Let's dive in. I doubt it will come as a surprise that a big part of getting your first tech job is your LinkedIn profile. LinkedIn is the absolute darling of recruiters and hiring managers because it offers them an easy way to quickly build up their talent pool and the goal is to stand out where they hang out. They can easily see who is in your network, your certifications, education, and work history, etc. According to a LinkedIn survey, 95% of recruiters say they've used LinkedIn to research and recruit candidates. Here are some tips to improve your LinkedIn profile. Prepare your LinkedIn to be easily viewable and approachable by recruiters. Use the correct keywords, tags, and sections for your profile. Connect with new people and not your relationships that you already have within your network. Create, share, and engage with content around your areas of core competence. This will help you optimize your profile and help you get more attention from the people that matter. Maybe you've been told that resumes are dead, but this couldn't be farther from the truth. Even though LinkedIn is now the star of the show, Resumes still play an important role in the hiring process. Star, show, row, get it? <laughs> anyway, most companies have an application tracking system, ATS, that they put resumes in. A good resume layout is crucial for preparing evidence of your skills, qualifications, and accomplishments to the ATS. Avoid dual column and fancy design resumes because they're typically hard for hiring managers to scan and they can get corrupted in the ATS. Having keywords that match the job listing, a LinkedIn profile link, and measurable metrics will increase your chances of a callback. The ideal resume usually has between 475 to 600 words. However, 78% of resumes include more words, and that isn't necessarily a good thing. The rule is simple, don't include fluff to make it buff. On the flip side, however, you don't have to have a single page resume. If you have useful information that helps improve your chances of getting hired, don't get limited by the one pager. If you're looking for a way to stand out from the crowd, then consider adding some sort of certification to your resume. Whether it's cloud, agile, or even data management certification, any one of these could help get your foot in the door for the job opportunities in the tech industry. Certifications are a valuable way to add meat to your resume and show employers you have the skills to do the job. Adding certifications that complement your core skills or adding skills outside your areas of core competence makes you even more desirable. If certifications are documentary proof that you completed a course or program, then projects are the living testimonies that your portfolio needs to highlight. A portfolio site helps give potential employers a snapshot of who you are in a more personal way than LinkedIn does, and it has to look good. This is not a necessity for everyone in tech, but I think it's crucial for software engineers and product designers. Creating one as a non-technical person is a plus, however. As a data analyst or even a program manager, you can have one in a blog format to share your ideas, thought processes, and projects. The personal portfolio site provides an additional edge as it can help you sell your story with graphs, charts, and visualizations, etc. It allows the recruiter to immerse in your story and gives you a better chance of getting hired. 
As a developer, you need to have your GitHub repo in addition to your portfolio. And for projects like GitHub, it's advisable to work on original projects that solve problems you care about versus clone projects. It's typically easier to pick holes and harder to appreciate clone projects even when they're done perfectly. Unique and personal projects, however, are a different story. It allows people to ask interesting questions about what you've created. A data scientist who spoke at a town hall I hosted spoke about how he got a job because he built a data model to compare used car prices and specs when he was trying to buy a car. This really helped him because his interview focused on the problem he was trying to solve and the different tasks in the process as well as the end result. For a GitHub profile, it's also important to ensure everything is organized nicely. I'll leave a link in the description about a post on Reddit on how to prep your GitHub. You've heard it over and over again, your network determines your net worth, or in this case, your next role. Having a strong network of contacts is essential to landing your dream job. It's easy to fall in the trap of thinking that you don't have anything of value to offer. But even as a newbie, your time and energy are extremely valuable. Leverage it for advice, guidance, referrals, and experience. Cultivate and maintain strong relationships with everyone, not just those at the top. You should seek to connect with those who are just starting out just like you as well. Developing a support network can help you land the right job or even the right internship. An interview is your chance to further highlight the information in your resume and show an employer the person behind the skills and experience. Being well prepared can make it easier to impress an interviewer or panel and secure your dream position. A good way to present yourself in the best light is by doing your research. Show the interviewer that you have the understanding of the business, knowledge of the industry, or some insight into the direction the company may be heading. Then showcase how your skills and experience will benefit them in reaching their goals. Review some of the most common and tough interview questions to prepare quality answers to use in your interview. This can help you feel more confident in your answers and give you a better idea of the qualifications you will highlight during the interview. It's also important to prepare your own questions and show that you're prepared and have been considering the role carefully. Job interviews are stressful. The difference with coding interview is that you've got to code for real on the spot and it adds extra pressure to an already stressful situation. Many employers perform coding interviews to ensure you're fluent in the coding languages they use and have the right technical experience. Coding interviews are the holy grail of the tech recruitment process. For those who've been through a handful of technical interviews, you can understand firsthand the intensity and pressure coding interviews can place on you. If you're aiming at a high paying job as a software developer, then it goes without saying that you have no choice but to survive this process. So start out by researching the technology stacks of the company, ask current employees about the process and have a mock interview where possible. Practice algorithms and data structure challenges beforehand as they would help during this process. Websites like Codility, HackerRank, and Unicode are great practice tools. Explain concepts out loud during coding interviews as the hiring managers are just as interested in your thought process as they are in your solution. For my research, getting your first job in tech can take anywhere from three to nine months. It requires a lot of hard work, patience, and perseverance. If you ever feel overwhelmed, stop for a while, recharge, and give it a go again. You totally have what it takes to crush it, and I'm rooting for you. I'd like to give a shout out to Santa Danny Thompson for some of the valuable advice I've gleaned from his Twitter spaces that helped me while preparing this video. Give him a follow at DThompsonDev on Twitter He's always sharing advice on how to code and land jobs in tech. Thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe. You can also leave a comment if you enjoyed the video or if there's something else you'd like me to cover. It was great sharing this with you and I can't wait to see you in my next video. Thank you.